your people we declare your mighty words bless every the lord god almighty yes, lord who was and is and is to come bless every the lord god almighty who reigns forevermore. Lord, you reign forevermore. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. We adore you. Magnify your name in all the earth. Glorify your name. Glorify your name. Glorify your name in all the earth. Jesus. I love you. I will praise you. I will adore you. I will glorify your name in all the earth as long as I live. As long as I live, I will glorify your name. I will glorify your name. Glorify your name in all the earth. Spirit, Spirit, I love you. I will praise you. I will adore you. Glorify your name in all the earth. Glorify your name, glorify your name, glorify your name in all the earth. Come glorify your name, come glorify your name. Glorify your name in all the earth. Here we are in your presence. We declare you as our God. For we have no other God but you. We have no other God but you. I have no other Father but you. You are the only reason why I live. We glorify your name in all the earth. Here we are in your presence, God. We lift our voices to declare you as our God. We have no other God but you. We have no other person, we have no other father but you. We declare you as God. For all the miracles that you have done has brought us the refreshment and the peace that we need. And this causes us to relax in your arms and say you are a good God. We worship you because you are God. We honor you because you are God. 
I glorify you because you deserve my praise. May your name be exalted above every other name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Beloved, you are welcome to End Time Radio. My name is Brother Gabriel Adade. This afternoon, or wherever you are listening to me from, there is an urgency for me to address the, an issue. There is an urgency to address an issue that I believe Christendom are falling into error. Please send your Bible with me into the book of First Galatians, chapter number one. Brother Paul is speaking in Galatians chapter 1 and he made things very clear to us that we Christians might not have any pitfalls in our Christian walk with the Lord. But Paul is testifying something that is very, very, very important. I want to read it from the verse number 10. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Jesus Christ. If I should not, I should yet continue to please men, then I can never be a servant of Christ. Now he continued to say in verse 11, but I certify you, brethren, I declare, I make it known unto you that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. That a gospel that has been given unto me was not given to me by man, and therefore I am not preaching to please men. I am not preaching according to how men want me to preach. This is what Brother Paul is saying, and this is exactly what Brother Gabriel is saying. I am having and attracted many people that disagree with the gospel of truth. And I love it. I love it. For I neither receive it from man. This is what Paul is saying. No, he might be pass it unto me. No man lay his hand upon me and cause me to receive it. This is what our Paul is saying, that a gospel that I preach was not given to me by somebody saying that I gave it to him. No, nobody passed it on to me. Mm. Mm. For I neither received it of man, neither was I sought it by the revelation, neither was I taught it. In other words, nobody gave it to me. Neither did anybody search me now and search me how to preach and how to do the ministerial work of God. But I receive it by the revelation of Jesus Christ. I receive the call of God by revelation of Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, one thing I want you to understand in all this teaching is the call of God comes by the revelation of Jesus Christ to a person. The call of God is birthed out. A person will know that he or she has been called into a ministry by divine revelation of God. But Paul said, this is how I receive man. And the person that helps you to receive your call is not your father. Don't call that person a father. He is just a revelator. He is not a person that stood that the spiritual gift that God is giving to the church for the perfection of the gospel of God might be manifested. But apostle, I receive my calling by the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. It was through revelation. Mm. But when it pleased God, no, I've jumped. Let me go to verse 13. For ye have heard of my conversation in the time past in the Jewish religion, how they beyond measure persecuted the church of God and wasted it. How the Pharisees, how the demonic group of that time, how the Isis, how the Boko Haram, how the Islams, how the Hindus, how the Catholicism in that time, how the, the missionaries in those days fought against the true birth of Jesus Christ into the life of men. 
The gospel has stood the test of time. The gospel has stood the test of time in the hands of wicked people who have no understanding of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And by so doing, had destroyed many lives, had taken many into another dimension, wounded them, bruised their heart, sent them to hellfire. Apostle Paul said that, and its prophets in the Jewish religion above many, my equal in my own nation, being more a sinless zealous of the tradition of my fathers, of the tradition of my fathers. Hmm. Of the tradition of my fathers. Wow. Apostle Paul is now calling somebody father. Who is his father? Here he was talking about his genetics. He was talking about the people, somebody like Abraham. Ladies and gentlemen, a young brother recently visited me and he asked a question. I love answering the question. Because I find myself as one of the ensign, uh, I don't want to use titles. I don't want to use the title like a brother. The modern Christianity call them apostles. They want to help the young children who are coming, who are fatherless. They have no physical father who is pursuing God that can pass it on. Teach them the way to serve God in a manner that they're supposed to. So to the fatherless, I want to stand as a brother. A brother that stands and walk with them and in this i have many questions to answer every now and then the gospel traditional preachers will stand in every day and fight what i teach others to obey the voice of god so this young brother came to me and he asked me brother gabriel please i have a question and my question is what is your view about impartation impartation to impart means giving what you have to somebody to impart means transfer transfer of spirits transfer of spirit can spirit be transferred can a spirit be transferred yes yes a spirit can be transferred a spirit can be transferred but it is only God that can do that. No man can do that. Spirits are transferable. I want you to, I want to make myself clear. Can spirit be transferred? Yes. Only God can transfer his spirit to a man. But Satan can transfer spirit to any person at any time. When it comes to God, only God can do that. And when it comes to Satan, yes, Satan can also do it. So I want you to be aware spirits are transferable. Impartation are clear. But when we come to the gospel in Jesus Christ, no man can impart except God. This is my argument, and this has caused many troubles. This is my argument. When it comes to the spirit of God, Apostle Paul said, I did not receive anything from man, except what through revelation of Jesus Christ I received and lived by it. He said in verse 15, he said, It pleased it, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb? Did you hear that? Who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace? The callings of God is grace, it's not man works. So, anything that you're calling me, spiritual father, impartation, and other nonsense that a church is floating around, ladies and gentlemen, I am here to dispute that. There is no scripture based that says that a man has a legal right to transfer his spirit. To any person. I'm going to argue with so many question, uh, scriptures to make you clearer. Because some of you are following so many things. We have the GOs, we have spiritual fathers, we have the bishops, we have the moderators, uh, 
and our prophets that we think that when they laid their hands upon us, we received what they have fasted for. When they laid their hands upon them, we received what they have absent themselves from. We can't receive it like that. It's not an easy task. It's not an easy thing. But the Paul said, the Lord separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace. There was a separation already, but it took the grace for me to fulfill the call of God. Why the grace? Because he has been called in the mother's womb. He was an apostle, yet he was running after things that could only satisfy his fleshly psychic desire. To reveal his son in me, by grace the Lord revealed his son in me, that I might preach him among the brethren immediately, I confirmed not with flesh and blood. He said, when I received this revelation, that I had to present Jesus to people, I didn't go to any professor and sat under his feet and learned. I did not go to any bishop, any general overseer, any moderator, any chancellor, uh, any uh, pastor, any bishop, any apostle. I did not sit under flesh and blood and learn the gospel of the truth. What is the flesh and blood here means? The flesh and blood here means people that we call them rabbi teachers. People that we call them professors of our days. People that we call them uh, bishops of our days. Brother Paul said, I didn't have any encounter with any of them. Woo! What does it mean then? Now I didn't, neither did I, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. Eh? So literally, Brother Paul is saying, I have no spiritual father except jesus christ we are building it up from here apostle paul said i didn't have any spiritual father nobody fathered me nobody bishop me nobody apostled me nobody discipled me but the lord did it the lord did it and it's not the truth in Acts chapter number nine where we have the, the, the co confession, the confession of Paul when he was Saul. A man was sent to him, Ananias, to go and lay his hands upon him for him to receive his signs. I do believe if there was any person that's supposed to guide, save guide the, uh, brother Saul into his spiritual maturity, Ananias was supposed to be the apostle on those days that was supposed to father, that was supposed to be disciple, that was supposed to mentor. But upon is saying, I didn't have any mentor. I, didn't, I don't dispute about mentorship. I don't dispute about mentor, somebody mentoring you. Mentoring you means teaching you to understand your call. Their call is divine. Their call is spiritual. But you need somebody to teach you. You need somebody to bring you, to raise you up in the knowledge and to understand the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, such men are being classified as spiritual fathers. And that word is what I am trying to fight against. That call nobody your spiritual father. Brother Jeremy, does it exist? No, sir. No, sir. We have the word father means the word fatherhood is paternity. Paternity. Paternity means family relationship, kinsman, kinsman relationship, kinsman. Come from the word father or pata in Hebrew word. Pata means you descended from that. A state of being a father, a root, a root, author, author. You are the one that generated. Ladies and gentlemen, fatherhood. Fatherhood has been misunderstood 
in the context of scriptures. Prognates, author, writer, founder, sustainer. Ladies and gentlemen, when we take all this words into practice, and we define the word father, it simply means having the same sin like your father. My children have my DNA. Either they like it or not, they have my blood. If I am sick and I need any organ transplantation, the first person that might be consulted could be my children. The second alternative would be my half brothers. We come from the same father and the same mother. My literally DNA genetics descendants are the people that can help me. In spiritually, we have something common like that. We have the same Father, the Holy Spirit. We have the same Father, Abba, the maker, the source of everything. His name is God the Father. His name can be called Jesus Christ. And his name also can be called the Holy Spirit, the triune God. They consist the beginning of all things. They are the author of all things. They are the founders of all things. They are the progenitors. And they are the sustainers. They sustain because the source will sustain everything that comes out of it. That is all that Paul is confirming here. The gospel of what I stand for was revealed to me by the Father Holy Spirit. The Father Holy Spirit, he reveals in the spirit of revelation. And when he revealed it to me, he sustained me. He kept me without consulting man. Consultant here means without depending, without running after man for what man has for me. Wow, Brad Gabriel. This is very, 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 very important. I made this young brother aware that based on Matthew chapter number 23, please let's go there with me. Jesus saying these things, which brother Paul actually is affirming and confirming that he didn't consult the disciples who were ahead of him. He didn't. But what did he do? He said, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and I abode with him 15 days. After my revelation of my calling, I stood and consulted the Holy Spirit 24 7 for three good years. Three good years. I never revealed myself to the Peter and the brothers. He stayed there. He stayed. He stayed in Damascus. He went to Arabia when they wanted to kill him. They put him in a basket and they threw him out of the city wall. And he said he went to Arabia and he returned into Damascus. And after three years, he, before three years, he was staying in Damascus. Before he went to Peter, John, and the disciples, which were the students of Jesus Christ. Those people that Jesus mentored them. Jesus fathered them himself. Yes, because he is a true father. Why are we now depending upon man for spiritual things? Why are we now coming to man? All that I want to dispute is that no man has any gift of God to give you if heaven has not endorsed it. Please, this is all I want you to say. I don't want you to understand. When it comes to these spiritual fathers, they lay your hands upon me. Pastor, pray for me. Please, please, please stop those things and seek God yourself. I have been preaching from the age six. 
And I tell my story, it sounds very, very uh, silly, but it's true. I don't lie. The Lord is my witness. But the Paul said, I was called from my mother's womb. And that was me. I was called from my mother's womb. I have never had any teacher, any pastor, any minister that I could sit under his feet and for him to teach me. I never have one. Never. Never. The one I was supposed to have was my own cousin's the fiancé who was causing abortion with him. I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed to say that. They did abortion about three, four, five, six times when I was a little boy. Before that guy married my cousin, they have caused about six times abortion. He was the person who was teaching and preaching the gospel. And when I hear his voice, that there was something in me that was craving for more. I said, Lord, I need this. In all his wickedness, in all his sinful life, had he died in that time, he was going to hell. Yet I could hear the voice of God. He would take me to scripture union at the age of seven, eight. Standard talk about doing well with Presbyterian, they call it Children's Day. We will recite gospel. And my first gospel that was given to me was John, uh, John chapter 3. John chapter 3. There was a man called Nicodemus came to Jesus in the night. Very lengthy. Another one that was given to me was Psalm 120 verse 7. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. That was my first quotation that we give to me. That was the first quotation somewhere in 19... Uh, 1976 or 77. It's a little boy in school. Yeah, 76. Psalm 120 verse 7. They gave me that scripture. And the next year, they gave me uh, John chapter 3. I didn't understand that word, but you can imagine from childhood up to today, I am for peace. But they, when I speak, they are for war. That was prophetic. That wasn't coincidence. And here I am. I am speaking for peace. But when I write messages on Facebook, when I preach on, on messages, people don't want to hear them. What have I done, Gabriel? Oh my God, what have I done? I am teaching people how to walk in the ways of God. And nobody wants to listen to that. Mm, I am for peace. But when I speak, they are for war. I see this quotation every now and then manifesting in my life. Why? I'm speaking for your peace. I am trying to teach you the ways of God. That you were sick, God. At the age of eight, nine, I started fasting. I fast from 6 to 12. You can imagine. Every five minutes, because the food wasn't available. So it wasn't a big deal per se. So one I wouldn't eat is the breakfast. And in the lunch, when we come, in those days, we used to break from a uh, Ghanaian school system. We have the afternoon one that we come home and eat the lunch, and then we go back and finish the evening one. So in the morning, I would eat because I was not getting food. I won't get enough money to go to... To school and buy the, those demonic food that they were cooking for us, which we didn't know. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. I will not go there. So I will fast. And I read my Bible. I read my Bible. I had nobody to question him. I had so many questions in my mind. Coming from a father who is a catechist, who was supposed to teach me better, but he was married to two women. That is my story. And what I saw was my mother and the rival always fighting. What I saw is my, me and my half brothers. We couldn't sit on the same table together because my mother rather will not sit there. My mother will put a hatred on her children. My mother rather will put a hatred on her children. So they were fighting my mother in the Growing up in such environments, wanted to be godly. What could I do? And I call my mother rival mommy. That is all that I could do. I love her as my mom, although she didn't love me. She didn't know my brothers and sisters. My senior brother who lived there with them never liked any of them. 
I don't want to go into deep family pr problems, but this is where I grew up. When I went to secondary school, I came into an agreement with God that God, I want you to take me and let me go and live under my uncle and serve him. And if you take me there into a city called Techiman in Ghana, I will give my whole life to you. And the Lord did it. The Lord opened the door for me. And when I went, entered into scripture union, and I started developing God. Presentation, we don't speak tongues. They said they believe it, but they, don't, they didn't speak it. And I had some students, classmates, schoolmates who were speaking in tongues come home to pray with my, my auntie, my uncle's wife. And that was where I got my Holy Ghost baptism. Nobody laid his hands upon me. I heard these guys praying in talks. I would go and sit, sit behind the window and they will come here, Gabriel. If you want to come in, you can come in. If not, then go out because I was the eldest among my uncle's. Uh, 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 children. How are the elders? So they say, if you sit there, your little brothers and cousins will come and sit there and it will attract people. So therefore, please go away. And I couldn't go as, uh, because I couldn't trust myself that I fit in. So they will pray their tongues in my room where I was sleeping, like a boy Samuel. Ladies and gentlemen, Apostle Paul said that I was born in my mother's womb to do what I'm doing. But I had nobody. I had nobody to say that this is my father, except the Holy Spirit. And that is what I teach. That is what I teach. Call nobody and depend not upon anybody. Because studying under a professor doesn't make you a professor. It doesn't give you what the professor knows. Many of you have been deceived. This is what Jesus said. One time I prayed and said, Lord, I hear this guy praying in tongues. And if it is true, if it is for you, if it is true, please, I want to speak in tongues. I slept in the night. And I have many demons and witches fighting me. Said I pray in tongues. And I saw all of them falling down. All of them falling down. I said, my God, there is power in this thing. That was where my interest began to develop in spirituality. Where the Lord began to take me into spiritual realm, take me into highest level, and reveal so many things to me that I shouldn't and I couldn't. And most of the time, I couldn't keep up my mouth. Mm, I made my friends I know God took me here. God took me here. The Lord showed me here. Having dreams and visions, hearing the voices of animals, the voice of trees, the air blowing, and you could understand and understand every, every sound. Who taught me that? Who taught me this? It was the Holy Spirit. And that brought me on where I am now. And now I believe what I believe now because somebody passed it on to me, but it was the Father. The Father Jesus, the Father Holy Spirit, the Father of our Father. They gave it to me. But Jesus is saying here in Matthew chapter number 23, Matthew. Matthew, St. Gospel, I can't St. Matthew, chapter 23. Please join me to read the verse number 8. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. All ye are brethren. Jesus said all Christians are brethren. Nobody should be called a rival. Do we come back to that? And call no man your father upon the earth. Call no human being your father upon the earth. Mm. For what is your father? Pata, pata. Abba, Abba. Jesus, you the term Abba, pata. Means coming out of him. A descendant. A root. Springing out. And that root must sustain. I love the word sustainer because if I take the sustainer out of fatherhood, it, it, it reduces its meaning. You came out of that and that will sustain you. Came out of that and that will sustain you. So many of you who call yourself fathers, who have rejected and deserted your children, you call, how can you call yourself a father? And you are ashamed. And you are ashamed. Giving birth to a child that you don't take care of. It's a curse. It's a curse. It's a big curse. It's a big curse. In a man that gave birth to a child and abandoned that child for any reason, any reason whatsoever the reason is, it's a curse. If you die, you go to hell straight away. No balance, no balance. 
Hey, I mean, and his, my, the, the mother have divorced. That is the cause. Because that's why God says, I hate divorce. Abandonment comes because of divorce. Because the parents wouldn't allow me to marry her. If you were right, if you were doing right, would the parents not allow you? The devil is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. Jesus is saying, Not a call any man a master, for one is your master, even Jesus Christ. But he that is the greatest among ye shall be your servant. Did you hear that? He, oh my God, he who, so, who is being called prophet today is a servant. Who is being called a bishop today is a servant. A sister came to me. And she was asking me questions. So I took my time and answered her. She was so pleased. She was so pleased. Oh, thank you, Pastor. God bless you. I have so many questions to uh, question you. But please, I don't want to be, I don't want to bother you now. I said, please go ahead and bother me. I am a servant. He who is supposed to be greatest among you should wash your feet. He who is supposed to be greatest among you should serve you, should not take from you, but give it to you. And you can give it freely to them because freely they have given and you also must give freely to them. They shouldn't sell it to you. They should give it freely to you and you must give it re in, re in Apostle Paul said, communicate back. Communicate you, communicate back to them. There are so many of us, we are crushed with what Apostle Paul said. We are crushed. Whenever we raise the word of Jesus Christ, the first person that Christians are quoting is Apostle Paul. But we don't we don't read his, his his scriptures very well. The first person that people were standing and say, Hey, mean Apostle Paul said this. Did he contradict Jesus Christ? Huh? No. Apostle Paul did not contradict Jesus Christ. Why can't, could he do that? He affirmed in Galatians chapter 1. I did not receive any spiritual father. Let me read an article that a man wrote. Call no man a father by Father Richard Bello. Let me read his article and try to bring it to what I understand because I found so many things that he explained here very, very important. He says several, several decades have passed since Bink Cosby done the clerical garb and portrayed on the screen on a role which will end up him to many even to these days father O'Malley. somewhere earlier in our sanctuary one of the great humanitarians of our time father flandon father by boys town in the Navarish car their home became national known refuge for homeless boys in many ways, Mother Teresa of India and his contemporary female counterpart in caring for the poor and the downroaded, downtrodden of her adopted land. But what are we to make of these titles? We admit the work and the character of these people. But doesn't the Bible issue the command to call no man a father? Certain statements made by Jesus have often been the basis of great controversy, great controversy, both inside and outside of the church. He's saying, do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father. He who is in heaven has proven to be no exception. There is no exception. It has been proven to be no exception. At the issue of interpretation, some Protestants interpret, interpreters are sure that Jesus is warning here against addressing church leaders as fathers. The Protestants are saying God or Jesus was warning people by calling the leaders of the church as fathers. They, of course, are interpreting father in this scripture to mean spiritual father. Their understanding of this scripture means call nobody spiritual father. Therefore, they refuse to call their clergyman father, preferring instead such title as pastors. So a pastor is what the Roman called them fathers, Roman father. Reverend or perhaps even brother, 
So this is the Roman father trying to defend, trying to defend what Jesus said. At the outside, therefore, let me point out that spiritual father is an interpretation of the law statement rather than what he actually said. Spiritual father is an interpretation, this according to this man. Mind you, I am not denying the need of interpretation of scripture. Instead, I am pointing out that the Lord said, Father, not spiritual father. Father, don't call anybody father, not spiritual father. What is the issue here? Simply this take face value, Jesus warning against calling any man a father. We not only seem to rule out calling a clergyman a father. Did he hear that? Don't call any man. So even Roman father, you shouldn't call them fathers. You don't call bishop a father. You don't call any brother. Call them brothers. It will also keep us from using that title for earthly fathers and grandfathers, Asian church fathers, or even city fathers. Would it not? For in reality, the law statement as it appeared in the text is that only one person is ever to be called a father. And that is simple as it's. My children call me daddy. Daddy. It is what Jesus came to correct. Ladies and gentlemen, my children can call me brother Gabriel. My children can call my wife sister. Because they are, she is their sisters. We should call Christian brothers and sisters, pastors who stand in front of us, brothers. Brother, that's why I call my name Brother Gabriel. Brother Gabriel. Nobody should take that title upon him, sir, because it's a title that belongs to God. And it means a lot. It means a lot. That is why Jesus said, Whenever you are praying, say, our Father who is in heaven. Our Father is in heaven. But is Christ saying to be taken at face value? If so, several other passages in the Bible are immediately in conflict, including some statement by the Apostle Paul in the New Testament to the Church of Corinthians. He wrote, for if you were to have countless tutors in Christ, yet you will not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. I became your father through the gospel. I became your father through the gospel. What is Brother Paul saying in the book of 1 Corinthians here? What Brother Paul is saying is, I became a person who is feeding you with the word of God. Who is sustaining you with the word of God. I didn't give birth to you, but I am sustaining you. So here, Brother Paul is saying, I am a father to you because a father is a sustainer. is the one that feeds, that feeds. Like a father, he feeds us. Like a father, he leads us. He's a shepherd. Therefore, he called himself a chief shepherd. He leads us. David said in Psalm 23, he leads me beside still water. Like a father, he feeds his flock. So what Paul is saying in here is that I have become a father to you by Jesus Christ's appointment. I have been appointed as a father. I am not a father, but I have been appointed as a father. But don't call me a father. Call me Brother Gabriel. Sorry, call me Brother Paul. Call me Brother Paul. Ladies and gentlemen, in verse 2, does not... Paul claimed to be the spiritual father of the Corinthians. Father Paul, if it pleases you. Furthermore, he boldly referred to his spiritual ancestors as our fathers. He did address earthly fathers in Colos, Colossae in the way, Father, do not provoke your children. Let them become discouraged. According to the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, it's wonder, Father, do not provoke your children. It's Abraham's response was not, sorry. Um, it will appear that Apostle Paul continually didn't interpret the Lord Jesus Christ's words to mean only one who to be called a father, that is the heavenly father. In addition to this, when the rich man saw Abraham in heaven with Lazarus in his bosom and addressed him as father, Abraham 
response was not, do you not realize that only God the Father is to be called a father? Rather, he replied, son, remember, instance, remember, remember. So, brother, uh, Apostle, uh, 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 brother Abraham also called uh, the rich man's son. What are we talking about? A descendant, ancestors, ancestor, father me, ancestor. The roots that we are coming from. But Jesus corrected us. They are all literally your brothers. Beloved, this word Father had existed. Mind you, one of the reasons why Jesus came to this earth was to correct us. Was not to cause us to maintain what we have. Was to correct us. Apostle Paul basically spoke to the Gentiles. So he had to use the word that could the Gentiles could relate to. So he couldn't use words that Peter and John were not using. Peter and John were not calling the father any longer because Jesus has made them aware. They shouldn't call anybody father. Apostle Paul was, was using that title because he had to explain it to the Gentiles that they might be able to accept what he was trying to say. What does it actually mean? Is it a mere title? Yes, to us it's the title. But to God it means something. Father Abraham means the descendants of Abraham. And do we know that we are all the descendants of Abraham? I don't think that Jesus will call. Jesus will call. Abraham, any other name apart from your forefathers. In the book of John, he called it your forefathers. Your forefathers rejected me, refused me. I gave your forefathers manna in the book of John chapter 6. So even Jesus used the title to explain it to us. But what was he saying? Don't identify yourself that these are your source. Never identified yourself with them spiritually. Don't physically, yes, but spiritually, they are not yours. Spiritual father, spiritual father, dangerous word because fathers impart. You can have a father who hasn't got. Whom you haven't got his DNA in you. Well, let's see what this man continued to write. But let us not stop here. For after saying only one is your father, Jesus proceeded to declare, and do not be called teachers. For one is your teacher, the Christ. Jesus is your teacher. His word teaches us. Yeah, he himself acknowledged Nicodemus to be a teacher of Israel. He himself acknowledged the father in John chapter 3 that Nicodemus being a teacher and don't you understand this? What does it mean? You stand in the position to carry my word and give it to others. Well, it titled Jesus had no other way to refer Nicodemus but calling him also a teacher. You teach people the ways of God. A teacher hasn't got something of his own. A teacher is always taking somebody's material. What somebody has explained, he understands and accepts it and gives it to them. Teachers are giving concepts. Teachers are giving principles. And what Jesus is saying that those people who are giving you this word, it is not theirs. It is mine. <laughs> so they'll come to me and I will teach you. So you diligently study the word of God, knowing that in it, you will find the ways of God, but you refuse to come to me. You refuse to come to me, the words of life. You refuse to come to me, the roots of those words, and I will give you the power. That was why he was trying to dispute. You diligently study the scriptures, knowing that in it, you will find salvation, but you stop coming to me. It's only in me that you have the salvation. Jesus is saying here, call no human being a teacher because I am the teacher. 
What is he saying? Don't relate to any human being. Don't go to any human being to teach you without coming to me to teach you because I am the real teacher. I am the real teacher. They sit. Jesus, Jesus cautioned uh, in, 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 in the gospel. He said, be very careful to listen to what the Pharisees, they teach you because they sit in the seat of God. Earthly teachers, earthly pastors are sitting in the seat of God. They will show you how to, but they can't give it to you unless you come to me. This is my teachings. This is all I'm talking about. Please, unless you understand the spirit, you can't. And I wish people would listen to these teachings because sounds are in statement, you can't express yourself. English is not my language. English is not my language, so it takes only the Holy Spirit to give me the word to explain the word of God that will make even infants to understand it. Gentlemen recently came to me and said, Gabriel, you are very prudent. You are very crafty. I am not crafty. I have the Holy Spirit that explains things the way that you struggle to understand. I am not prudent. And if I am a prudent, it is the Holy Spirit. If I'm crafty, it is the wisdom of God. First Corinthians chapter 2. We declare the wisdom of God, not the wisdom of man. So people come to dispute with me every now and then. And when I give them what I'm trying to explain to them, their eyes begin to open. Some insult me every day, call me liar, cheats, call me blasphemer, call me uh, uh, misleading people. <laughs> I'm misleading people to heaven. Oh, what a job. What a joy I have within me when I'm misleading people to heaven. Mm -hmm. What is Brother Paul saying here? What is that? Jesus saying in Matthew chapter number 23. Jesus is saying that come to these people through me. Never rely upon any man without me. In the church at the Antioch, certain men were called prophets and teachers. Then again, Apostle Paul not only recognized teachers as gift of God to the church, but he also didn't hesitate to call himself a teacher of the Gentiles, a teacher of a Gentile. Jesus had called nobody a teacher. I am the teacher. Furthermore, in this present days, almost all of us, have at one time or another called a certain people Sunday school teachers. The discussion that goes far beyond any Protestant Catholic lines, therefore, in saying we should call no one a father or a teacher except God a father and Christ himself. The Lord Jesus appeared not to be taking issue with the use of these particular titles in and of themselves, the context of the passage gives us the interpretation key we are looking for. In this call no my father passage, our Lord is contending with a certain rabbi of his days who were using these specific titles to accomplish their own ends. These were the men, that is the point that attracted me that I wanted to use this material to talk. These were men using that side so to achieve their purpose, to twist men, to doctrinize men to follow their principles, to doctrinize men to copy and imitate them, to take, take their, and, and, and to be honest with you, religion has grown up from relationship with Christ Jesus to copying and imitating man. Now there is a funny thing going on on Facebook. A young brother yesterday wrote, let me see, I can't have even deleted it. He said he had issues that he needed to go before God with fasting and prayers, meditation and studying the word of God. Worship and praising God for three days. After the three days, the Lord Jesus appeared unto him and revealed so many things to him, quote in quotes, without explaining what so many things are they. Now he jumped down and said, whatsoever you are praying for, I am here with the impartation that the Lord gave to me in that vision. With the confirmation that the Lord gave me into that vision. 
You say amen to what I've written and you will receive what I received. These things, I can't get it. I can't get it. I recently went to Ghana and there is a place called Atria Mountains. To be honest with you, for me to climb that mountain, I was going with my nephew, who is basically my grandchild, and he has been there two occasions or three. So he told me, Uncle, please, the mountain is very high. So we need to eat before we go. I said, uh-uh, let me start my fasting at home. If I'm doing fasting, let me start it at home. I don't, I don't. So he said, no, Uncle, it's very high. So it better you eat to clump. <laughs> and when you go there, you begin to fast. I said, no worries. I will do it. I said, ah. In Germany, I used to work with uh, delivery work, and I climb, I climb how uh, steps up to let's say 15, 20 uh, 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 floors. When you go and the lift is not working, what do you do? You need to climb down. You need to climb up with 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 loads and other stuff. So I can do it. So when we reached there, I started pa 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 pa. <laughs> My fellow <fed us> slow. <laughs> Oh, I did it. I did it up to a certain level. I think three quarters. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not even up to one third. Three quarters was too much. My, I saw that all my body was wet. I have never received. <laughs> I've never been wet like that for the past ages. For the past five years. I've never gone through that. I saw that my clothes were wet from head to toe. I was sweating like that. And I stood there and my nephew asked me, Uncle, are you tired? I said, no, no, we are going. But I was breathing, panting like a dog. <laughs> Beloved, to climb that mountain. To climb that mountain is the highest mountain I've climbed in my life. Come from Ghana, mountain areas. My father come from Kuala. So I used to go to Kwama as a little boy when the cars could not climb the mountain. We would all come out of the car and we, we climb the mountain on foot and go and meet the car on top in those days when I was a little boy. So climbing mountain has not been something so difficult for me. But this particular mountain, yesterday I showed on Facebook. This particular mountain, <laughs> wow. It is tall mountain. It took us about 30 minutes to climb that mountain, 30 minutes. And some take them one hour, some take them three hours because you are climbing to go there and stay there for three, four, five, six, seven days to see the face of God. Lo and behold, I climbed it and I went there. I spent three days there. I cried to God for God to give me, give me my country to preach to them. And that was what I went in for. After three days, I fell within my spirit. The Lord has spoken to me that the message is clear. Go ahead and take what belongs to you. Now I come down, climbing this mountain, going up there for three days. I was lying literally on the floor. I was literally. You cannot believe this. You can't believe it. Many people come into that place so they don't have many uh, 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 mattresses. Am I nephew or my grandchild could have told me uncle we need to buy our own mattress which i could afford it wasn't a big problem at all for me to buy a student mattress he didn't tell me so when we went we were now going to look for mattress the only thing that saved me is here in the uk we have this campaign children campaign uh, 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 uh like a, like a suit that you go in to avoid mosquitoes when I was about to go, I thought, okay, Ghana, there are a lot of mosquitoes. So let me take one of my little children one. And I picked that one. So that was the one that I took into the mountain. So basically, I was lying on the floor. My nephew couldn't have any place to sleep. He was managed to get me mattresses from one of his friends who we met there. So I was literally lying on a cement floor. I wouldn't allow him to suffer like that. So we spent three days there. The first day I slept on the mattress and he was lying on the floor. I said, no, no, I can't do that. You take the mattress. I went around and looked for paper. This uh, hard uh, cover, uh, hard box. 
I found one. I said, you know what? You take the mattress and let me put my my my, my suit on it. I was literally lying on my bag. My head, the pillow was a bag. I'm not telling all these things because of any reason. I am telling you what I've gone through to get that anointing. And I am telling you, pray, amen, and receive that I am a liar. I'm a cheat. I am a deceiver. Don't listen to me if I tell you these things. Become a wicked person that doesn't want you to go through that process to, 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 to let the flesh suffer. To discipline my flesh. When I climb the mountain and I have a girlfriend in Ghana, I left my wife here. And when I met my former girlfriend, I said, oh, darling, how are you? Come and let me give you a kiss. Climbing this mountain for three days, coming back to kiss you to drain my anointing, I won't do that. Uh -uh. <laughs> Sister, you know what I've gone through. So I won't do that foolishness. This is the lesson of Christianity that we are portraying to you. I am your spiritual father. I have gone to mountains. Oh, yes, come and let me lay my hands upon you in parts. The only thing I can do to you is to drive away demons. That's what I can do. But to give you the gift that I have acquired from there, I can't impart it to you. You need to go through that process. The devil is a liar. This is what Jesus was saying. Coming to mom, let him help you to come closer to me. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. Jesus said, Jesus said, do not seek your accomplishment of spiritual food. Your accomplishment of spiritual satisfaction in the man because man has no answer. Mm -hmm. He continued to say that don't call anybody a rabbi. It's a title, but it means a lot. Why did Jesus say that? These, the answer revolve around at least two critical areas of leadership. Teaching and personal character. Teaching and personal character. A rival is a teacher who needs to practice what he is teaching. Consider first the teaching of the particular rabbi or rabbi, rabbi, yeah. They had begun their teachings at the right place. The law of Moses, said Jesus, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. They sit on Moses' seat. What do they do? In other words, they walk in Moses' call. They imitate the call of Moses. They speak the words of Moses to you, which is the law. Moses' law was a true tradition. Was a true tradition. Yesterday, my wife was asking me, according to uh, Apostle Paul, the law was a teacher by law nobody was able to fulfill the call of god and she asked me if the law was a teacher and god knew that the law could not save people why should god give them the law why should god give them the law the answer that the holy spirit gave me to her was anything that god gave it was a path to god it was a path to god the law was given to them as a, a way to go to God. It wasn't a way to have to become God. It's a way to go to God. So when we have the laws, the leaders, the path, is a road map to God. God is not a liar. He said, I shall not lie. So if you don't lie, you pray to God, God will listen to you. God is not a murderer. He said, I shall not murder. God is not a gossiper. He said, don't gossip. Don't give any false witness. So the law was given to them as a road map to God. But the law wasn't God. And in the law, the grace were given to them. Every law of God is embodiment of the grace. Jesus came and he removed the grace and placed himself there. I am the grace. And our Christians are playing games with the grace. Be aware of this. Jesus said that. So be aware that the law points us to Christ. All scriptures point us to Christ. The entire Bible is the book of the law. The book of the law. Jesus said in John chapter 15, abide in this book and let this book abide in you. This is my invite. I will come and dwell. I am my father. Will come in the body of the Holy Spirit. Come and dwell in you. And whatsoever you ask the father, it shall be given unto you. Abide in the law 
in the book in psalm one he said let not this book of the lord depart from your mouth meditate upon it he told uh joshua also in joshua chapter one verse eight don't be afraid meditate upon this word day in and day out Ladies and gentlemen, what are we talking about? The rabbi were the people that were having the teachings of Moses, the law. And the rabbis have the responsibility to preserve the tradition and the faithfulness of the nature of the word of God to pass it on to the next generation. All too often, however, the rabbi will add, they will add his own grain of wisdom to the true tradition thereby clouding the word of god and this is the problem that jesus wanted to solve when we come to man apostle paul said in first corinthians chapter 13 he said we see in part we see in part <laughs> i do believe and i do understand the scripture the scripture but john was talking to his friend but John, according to the Gospel of St. John, uh, yeah, according to the Gospel of John, tell John, the brother John was talking to his friend, he said, I pray, it is my desire that you shall prosper. This was a conversation with his friends. That you will prosper. And people are saying, God said that we should prosper. Let us see the context where the scripture was written. Who was addressing that issue? Some of these scriptures were written by the added, the added, the added explanation that they think that was what it meant. And that is why I have problem. That is why I have problem. When we put Jesus there, people will raise up us Paul and challenge what Jesus said. And Paul is crying. Paul is very, very crying. Why are you destroying my gospel? Because he's not here to explain it to us. He doesn't contradict what Jesus said. The rabbis, what they used to do, what they add up their own wisdom to the true word of God, and they clouded it. Instead of passing down the secret deposit along with the truth interpretation of the of the deposit, he will add his own private interpretation. And that was why Jesus was fighting. Don't call them your master because they are misleading you. In turn to his disciples, like their teacher, who would, after becoming a rabbi, do the same thing. They'll do the same thing. They teach them to obey and walk in their status. There are certain things that doesn't change. The way they dress. The way they do their things. And ladies and gentlemen, the final outcome of all these was tradition of men that made the true Mosaic tradition of no effect. And Jesus wondered. These people made the word of God with no effect. He said, with your tradition of men, with the teachings of the modern apostles and disciples that are saying that nobody can go to hell and come back, that Jesus will never take any person, these are the traditional teachings of men. My general overseer said it. My bishop said, who is that mocker? Who is that mocker? Who is mocking the word of God? That you are following and this i'm afraid for you yes i am afraid for you come to jesus call nobody a father come to jesus come 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 listen to what brother gabriel is teaching you pray over it and go to god and let god guide you that is what i said that's what i do i listen to men for some time i've stopped i just listen to god because men will mislead me people are accusing me every day this brother Gabriel is using people's dreams and vision to explain Bible. <laughs> Have you read Joel chapter 2? In the latter days, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. Have you read John chapter 14? Jesus said, I have many things to tell you, but you can't. Many things to teach you, but you can't. But when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach you all through. He will tell you all truths. He will take God chapter 16. He will take things that are mine. He will warn you of sin. He will warn you of the judgment of God, and he will warn you of righteousness. I need the Holy Spirit is warning us today. What are we doing contrary to what Jesus said? I am following what Jesus said. 
Say, if you have a problem, I am following what Jesus said in John chapter 14, chapter 15, chapter 16. That was one of the powerful messages that Jesus gave there. And that is where my life is built upon. He, he takes me into dreams and visions. He showed me things. He takes me to places. He showed me things. He tells speaks to me. As I'm talking to you, he speaks to me. He directs what I should say the next. I believe that. I have nothing of my own. Nothing of my own. Therefore, I don't mislead. And every message that I preach, I want you to know how God can use you. I want you to know how God loves you. I want you to know what the plans of God for your life. That is all. I have no, have no church. I'm an I'm a evangelist. I have no church. So I don't have a church. Now people go to that church, deeper life. People go to that church, redeem life. The people go to that church, what, what? No, 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 I have it. I have ministries and time. Ministry called life in Jesus Christ. And that is what I portray. Ladies and gentlemen, for laying aside the commandment of God, that Jesus said, you hold under the tradition of men. Again, Jesus said, all too well, you reject the commandment of God and you may keep your tradition, making the word of God of no effect through your tradition, which you have handed down. In summation of their private interpretation did in fact shut up the kingdom of heaven against these men. People shut up the kingdom of heaven from men. Why? Following the rabbis. Following their rabbis. Following the vision of the pastor. Following the vision of the intruder. I call them intruders. <laughs> uh, they are intruders. Let's see what Jesus said, according to this man, I love his. In order to cut through all these tradition of men that had made a mosaic tradition of no effect, and to bring people back to the truth Jesus Christ is holding, Jesus taught his disciples, but do not be called rabbi. In other words, he was telling them not to use their position as fathers and teachers, and as Opportunity to build disciples around their own private opinions. Did you hear that? Don't build anything around your own opinion. Mm. Mm. And that is what is going on in the church. I think. Bishop, what do you feel? I think. Please quote me Bible. For to do so would only serve to shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Curse the man that add up. Curse the man that subtract. Curse the man that mislead and misguide people to do what God, Jesus Christ, to teach us. Instead, with the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, rabbis, and indeed all who will teach God's word are to hand down faithfully. They should hand down faithfully the true tradition of only one rabbi, Christ Jesus himself. Present Jesus. Point out Jesus to people. This is what I think, sister. This is what I feel, sister. But this is what the word of God says. Let's take the word of God. Let us go to Jesus back and receive what he has for us. His brother Gabriel. Give me a different gospel. No, sir. I am giving you the gospel that our forefathers have lied unto us. Let everybody who need prayer come down. Let me pray for him. I a liar. I a liar. I a liar. Liar, 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 liar. Go down on your knees and pray for yourself. Go down and pray for yourself. Things that you can do, you feel comfortable. Freedom comes by practicing. You will know the truth and practice it. That's what the meaning is. You will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You will know you will accept and practice it and then the freedom comes. Knowing, knowing the truth is not only head knowledge, but practically when you become one with the truth. Ah, uh, in humbly speaking, I want you to understand. I want you to understand that Jesus is the only rabbi. For to do so, we will only serve to shut up the kingdom of heaven. Where am I? Jesus is the only rabbi that we should present. The Bible through the pen of the Apostle John called this particular tradition the doctrines of Christ. That this is the doctrine of Christ, presenting people to Christ. That's why I love Brother John. In fact, this is why the specific teachings of the 12 became known as the Apostles' doctrines. 
See there are times successful generation of fathers and teachers in the church have harmed down and guided the apostolic doctrine concerning Christ very carefully. For it represents the true interpretation of Holy Spirit. The faithfulness to true Christian doctrine, by the way, can especially be seen in the seven economical council of the church held between the fourth and the eighth century. It behooves anyone who claims to be a teacher of Christ doctrine to be faithful to the apostle doctrine handed down in those councils. Otherwise, he ran the risk of inserting his own private interpretation. I don't believe and I don't understand people today who reject visions and dreams. And I always said that vision and dreams should be judged by the word of God. Let any man be called accursed. Any person that added to. Hmm? Why it is true that all teachers of Christ's doctrine must begin at the right place, namely the Holy Scripture. It is also true that they should give the correct through interpretation of the Holy Scripture as passed down by the holy and the godly teacher and father of the church, especially in the seventh council. Why are the seven economical council so important? This is a Roman Catholic person, actually. I found something in that that I want to I wanted to study. So the council points out what the church universally held to be the true teachings concerning the person of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Trinity. They are faithful to what the Holy Scripture teach concerning the one through Rabbi, the teacher, which is Jesus Christ, the teacher, and the Father who teach private interpretation contrary to the doctrine of Jesus Christ taught in the seven economical councils should not, I believe, be recognized as true teachers and fathers. This is what this man is trying to say. I'm not confusing you by reading all these things. He's saying that there are people that are constitute the seven economical ecumenical economy economical council they are seven who consider i'm not going to roman catholics i'm not going to present all these things to you i'm not interested in that but what roman catholic built was they built upon the doctrines of the disciples what they received they pass it on to us what they receive from jesus christ I don't know that if people give the name apostle, apostle means student of Jesus Christ. They were student. So none of the disciples were called prophets. None of them were called teacher. None of them were called bishop. They were all called apostles. Why is it now the church is taking another title? Hmm? Why is it now we are taking another title? We must be very careful. We must be very careful. In the face of the stench and the shame of the apostasy of these religious leaders, therefore Jesus commanded his disciples, do not call anyone earthly, anyone on earth your father. For one is your father, he who is in heaven. While Father Abraham by his faithfulness deserved the title, as did the others of Israel, great in history, these men have forfeited their role as fathers. They were to cease and desist in their use of terms and in turn bow to God himself as foundation and as fourth hand of all fatherhood. And in assuming his winning, Jesus addressed us today with the greatest of all commandments, pointing the father and the teacher in his church and those they lead to a primary of level for God and the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, and to love for one another. What are we to do? From the beginning of the church history, as was true throughout Israel, those anointed by God for services were called by a certain name, prophet, teachers, rabbi, Israel, father, in the same spirit, other titles have emerged such as reverend, pastor, professors, teachers, 
brothers, bishops. We, in Catholics, they call them monks. In Presbyterian, they call them moderators. These designations speak of both warmth and dignity. Just as in our family unit, there is one who with love is called a father. So in God's household, we have honored and we will continue to honor those who have brought us to the new birth through our Lord Jesus Christ indeed. What better term for them than a father? Jesus warned against calling men father or teacher in order that the leadership of his holy nation will remain pure. Whether bishop, father, teacher, deacon, or a pastor, all leaders must remain faithful to the true doctrines of Christ and manifest personal character befitting godly humanity. Humility that leads the church into the love of God, the Holy Trinity, and of one neighbor. Ladies and gentlemen, what are we talking about here? Let us see certain things. Why Jesus was warning these people. Let's look at the personal characters. The second character, uh, uh, critical area of rabbinic leadership with which Jesus was concerned was personal character. He had de detected a major flaw in the character of these rabbis or these scribes and Pharisees. A sin that man be called self exhortation. Sin that is today can be called self exhortation. The danger, the danger of following these men, they will call themselves that they have what it takes. They have what it takes to change your life. They have anointing when they give that anointing, when it will answer all prayers. When I went to Ghana, there are some of this anointing oil, you can buy them like 20,000. And 20,000 in my country currency is not less than 400 pounds. You buy mere anointing oil for 400 pounds. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. You buy anointing oil for 500 pounds. Why? Because that anointing is Jesus Christ. That anointing answer all prayers. And this is the danger of our days. People who are exploiting the church. They are taking advantage over your ignorance. They are taking advantage over your laziness. They are taking advantage of your reluctant. You feel reluctant. You are lazy. When he had there, lazy. You feel reluctant. Uh, I want to do it, but you always have but, and these people are taking advantage of your vulnerability. You are vulnerable, you are vulnerable, you are threats, you are threats, and they can hijack you at any time. Pray with me, brother. Let us pray together, let us agree. Ginger, my faith, let my faith be cut up or raise up my faith. Stir me up. Oh, brother, when I pray with you, I am. Do you know the reason why? Because I may use a language, Bible language to pray. This is how I pray with my children. After I've taught them, I use the scripture to pray. They are children, so they don't know how to pray. So I say, pray this after me, Jesus. Your word is true. You want me to have you as a father. I don't have any father but you. You are the only father that I recognize. You are the only father that I want to have. Therefore, become my personal father. Let me come to you for food. Let me come to you for, for riches. Let me come to you for health. Let me come to you for protection. Let me have no father but you. Let no money become my father. Let no prophet become my father. Let no lawyer become my father. Let no boss become my father. Not even my biological fathers. Let my relationship with you as father be very plain that you are my provider. That you are the one that sustains me. That my health is in your hands. You are my father. So after finishing, I will teach them who a father is. Pray to your father. 
Oh, my mommy. Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 7, it's one of the scriptures that I love most. We can pray with so many things. Why Jesus is saying, I will come back. I will, I will give you some scriptures to finish it. I love it. The Lord is giving me some scriptures to use. The prodigal son in Luke, the Lord is using me, giving that scripture. In Matthew chapter 7, I will come back to that and explain that scripture. What am I trying to say? There are people who are calling themselves. They were using, they are using, they were using, and they are still using their position as a teacher, as a father, among God's people to exalt themselves and to exploit people. They wanted to be sure that they receive appropriate recognition. Recognition. Call me a bishop. And they have big cassock, big shade. <laughs> hey, brother Gabra. You were little boy. You were little in your own eyes. And now the Lord has raised you up. And Gabriel, you call yourself bishop. Having a big... Oh, Gabriel. What have changed you? Pride. Pride. self assertion They wanted to be called reverend. They receive appropriate. They want to be appropriated with their title. A title that's with their title. In light of this, they lack character of Christ. They lack it because Jesus was humble. Imagine that 28, come and learn of me. I am meek. 11, 28. 11, 28. Come, I am meek. These titles cause man to puff up. Jesus said, but he who is greater among you should be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. He will humble himself, be exalted. Ladies and gentlemen, the self exaltation spirit had manifested itself in several ways in our churches today. First, in a very hypocritical way, we call it hypocrisy. For they say, say Jesus, and do not what they say. They say what Jesus said, but they don't do what he does. All talk and no walk. They talk and they don't walk in it. Their talk were, was cheap because it was totally contradicted by their behavior. They speak one thing, they behave another thing. In pretense, they will make long prayers. But in behavior, they devour widows. They refuse the needy. They will make oaths, swearing by the gold of the temple rather than the temple that sanctified the gold, thereby revealing their secret love of money. So when you go to Roman Catholic, they are kissing everything, but they don't kiss Jesus. Now the church is kissing wealth. The church is kissing promotion. And they reject and they deny the righteous nature. Holiness and righteousness is not being kissed in the church. If holiness and righteousness is being portrayed in the church, people will look ordinary. Tie or no tie. Suit or no suit. Makeup and lashes or no eyelashes. We we'll feel ourselves that we are complete in God. Although they pay tithes of the means, and it's and coming, which they will have done gladly. They neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. They reject that. Because they were hypocrites in these and numbers of other ways, the Lord summed up his critics by saying, Even so, you also ultimately appear righteous to men. But inside, you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Plainly, their insight did not match their outside because they were filled up with self exaltation and self serving spirit. Second manifestation of the self exaltation spirit was the notice lack of actual services on their part. They don't serve God, they serve their belly. In their hypocrisy, they make themselves God to win their deliberate. This is what is going on. That is why you see your spiritual fathers having private jets. 
They have estate houses. They have brand new first hand cars. And big, big, big cars. They compete with the presidents. They compete with the thieves and arm robbers in our countries, presidents and politicians. They compete with them. I'm not afraid to call them thieves and arm robbers. You are in the sight of God if you don't know. The prostitutes. Recently, a uh, president came to Germany and started distributing money on the street for people to come and listen to them for public city. When you go to Ghana, there is no medicine at the hospital. People are dying every day. There is no good water there. When I went, I drank water. I had diarrhea. When I go to visit the toilets, everything was coming out like that. I need to buy water and drink it, foreign water and drink it. Because the water in the country, if I drink it, I would die. I would have died there. And now these people came to Germany, distributing money on the street to black people in the black community in Germany, in Berlin, where I used to live. A friend of mine just called me and telling me this things. Are they not thieves? Are they not murderers? Are they not arm robbers? And these are our bishops and our general overseer. These are their friends. Okay, be careful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when I went, there was no order. Policemen are at every five minutes drive. You see policemen taking bribe. Every five minutes drive, police are there taking money from you. All policemen in Ghana are going to hell. That is very hard statement by the R because they take bribes. There is no transparency there. People are lying all over. These people belong to our churches. Sunday, they all come to church. The teachers are liars. The prophets are liars. The bishops are liars. The moderators are thieves and arm robbers. They have dedicated the work of God to idol. Don't call them. Cry to God yourself. They are leading you to hellfire. Very painful, very painful, very disheartening. Very, very disheartening. They don't see anything wrong. Telling you that I went to mountains. Gone there to pray and see the face of God. And the first evening there was a general meeting. And I went to the meeting. And the... Uh, the worship was brilliant, although I didn't like it fully because the guy was self. The one who was leading worship was self. Everything was self. You know me. As for me, you know me. If 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 you don't play the drums very well, uh, you know. I said, ah, what are this kind of thing? I want to see the presence of God. I saw when I come here, I will see his glory come down. And people are falling on that. No, 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 no. Come on, it's flesh. I said, what is going on? Let's reach a prayer time. We are going to pray. So, the minister who ministered the word of God, very powerful, dynamic word. I said, wow, a powerful word. I like the way he gave the word because he gave certain things. Spoke about the dirty thing we was going on into the country that we need to pray for. He exposed them and I love it. So, well done. We are going to pray. And I saw one, two, three, four, five, six brothers. Three women and two, uh, three men. They took microphone. I said, wow. Now to now we're going to pray. Yes, I've come to the presence of God. Mm. Then the leader started calling out the prayer topics. And before he finished, I hear, mm -hmm. I said, my God. I said, hey, what are we? Immediately the Holy Spirit said, go out of this place. So I tell my grandchild, I said, nephew, I'm going. So uncle, what are you going? I said, I'm going out. I can't be in this place. I went out and I started crying. I said, God, where am I? 
That's what they said I'm gonna come here, I will meet you. Where am I? What is this? What is this? They prayed about two hours, and every prayer topic there are some people who are there. Hey. <laughs> Jesus. What is that? And the Bible says that we're groaning. That cannot be altered. <laughs> so you go to your father. This is impolite. This is filthy. This is dirty. This is stinking, smelling in the house of God. And I find it at a place where people have gone to seek God free. People come in with bunches of uh, food. <laughs> You people don't come here for prayer. You come here to eat. When they are coming, there are people, young children, who are carrying their food like this. Go and see little children. Oh, my God. I met a boy and I had a little child was just climbing out crying. A child of three years old. Me, as an old person, climbing that mountain, I was crying. And this three-year-old three, three year old child was climbing the mantle. And I think his uncle or one of his senior brothers went on him and said, come on, go back. They climb it to carry some people low to get money. So I said, why are you crying? So I just put my hands in my pocket and any money that came out, I just gave it to her here. Take it, go home. You shouldn't climb this mountain. Oh my God. For money. Nothing is wrong in Ghana. They can go and give that money to outsiders. And they will come in their meetings. All you politicians in Africa, hell is waiting for you. You can arrest me and put me in jail. I'm saying what God is saying. Hell is waiting for you. If you don't repent and throw all this money that you are using to enrich yourself, pastors and bishops and prophet cheats. I'm robbers in the pulpits. I'm speaking to you. If you don't repent and give your heart to God, and stop running after worldliness and trying to educate people to follow your steps. Some of them are going to India. Some of them are going anywhere. And the darkness in my country of birth is outrageous. The kings, the pastors, politicians, and the family elders have dedicated the gold and the diamonds and the timber and the cocos to idols. Therefore, they plant a lot, but they reap nothing. They drink, but they are not drunk. They wear clothes, but they are not warm. They plant many, but they reap absolutely few. Why? Because the curse of God is coming. They stand in marketplaces and greet people. They call themselves men of authority, but they themselves are not under authority. They love themselves. They love authority and power. They are post position focused. They are drunk with position. Fame is what they are running after. These were the reason why Jesus said, Don't call this man your fathers because they will indoctrinize you they will bring you to follow those things and they will turn your heart away from me the true god jesus christ jesus christ is looking for men and women that will point men and women that will point christ to them one of them was john the baptist the man that said, I must decrease, that he should increase. Who is the true leader? Who is the true leader? A man that has no reputation for outside. He has nothing to compete for. He has nothing to boast of. But he has everything to teach people to pursue this God. Jesus revealing the heart of his father. In St. Luke Gospel, let us finish it with that. There is a man 
The Bible called him a prodigal son. The Bible says that he came back to his father. Why would Jesus use the title of the father? He reveals the heart of a father. Matthew, Luke chapter 15, the verse number 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. Parable is the picture where that Jesus spoke to the disciples. Where things that have happened, things that have happened, that Jesus was cutting the picture and explaining it to them in the manner that they could understand him. Jesus said, the younger of that son, the father, came to the father and said, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. And he divided unto his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, took his journey into a far country, there wasted his substances with righteous living. The boy, two things that belongs to his father, it doesn't belong to him, it belongs to his father. Everything that we receive from the father still belongs to the father. Why? Because there is accountability for that. Everything that we receive from our father belongs to him. It is not ours. When I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and teach somebody how to walk in, I can't impart it. I don't have it. I don't have it. I don't have Bible actually explains to us that we don't have things that belong to us. In Matthew 25, when Jesus was talking the parable about the, the five, the ten virgins, when they came, the foolish one came to the, the wise one, give us some of your anointing, some of your Holy Spirit. They said, we can't. <laughs> we don't transfer it. Go and buy it yourself. Go and search for the buyers and buy it yourself. Go to Jesus Christ and take your anointing yourself. We need men. That is why Jesus called the five wise virgins. They pointed at the foolish ones. There is nothing like impartation in this. I can't give you what I have. It is my own. My name is written on it. My calling is registered. It is stamp, stamp on it. My identity is on it. I can't give it to my children. My father was a preacher. My father was a cat keys, but he doesn't preach the way I preach. <laughs> He had his call. He's going to give accounts of his call. How my call? Stop deceiving yourself, my spiritual father, uh, impartation and all this nonsense. There is nothing like that. <laughs> Come to Jesus. Come to him and let him guide you and give you what you need. Stop going to man for answers. The prodigal son took everything that the father gave him with an accountability. He went and wasted it. Oh, don't you waste it. Because he didn't go with the father. He went alone. <laughs> he didn't have knowledge. He didn't have understanding. He didn't have wisdom. Things that we achieve. Things that we achieve. Out of pray for me. Bring us into danger. It destroys our lives. Things that we achieve. Say amen and get it. Amen. Say amen to this prayer. And you receive it. The devil is a liar. You don't fast. Don't pray. Don't study the word of God. Say amen. And every anointing on brother Gabriel will come upon you. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. No, there is nothing like that. I'm sorry. You have to fast your own fasting, sister. Brother, you need to study your own word of God. That when somebody comes to you, not that, oh, let me call brother Gabriel and ask him. No, 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 no. You need to study your own word. The closer you are with God, the closer the things of God become clearer. And the understanding concerning the word of God becomes clearer. He said that the boy went away, squandered everything, abused and misused it because there was blessing of the father attached to it. In a few days after, farming broke into where he was. He decided to be in want. Farming are always there. Farming are always there. I'm going to give a, a teaching after this teaching, the danger of worries. The Lord was dealing with me this morning to talk about worries. Any person that live with worries will go to hell. Very dangerous. Worry. When you are worried, the cares of life. I'll talk about that tomorrow. So listen to that teachings tomorrow.
the danger of worries, the cares of life. This boy, he came into a place where there was farming. Farming leads to worries. Farming leads to a place where you begin to sit down and think about what to do next. And he went and joined himself into the citizen of the far country. And they sent him into a field to, to look after swine. This is a boy who have reduced from being a son, from being father of a slave, the bottomless slave. When we take ourselves from the sonship of the father, when we plug ourselves from God and we think that we can do it without him, that is how the destruction it is. Come closer to your father every day. So one day the boy was hungry. The boy had nothing to feed on. So verse 17 is what I'm going to bring you. He came to his senses. My teachings is to bring you to your senses. What does it mean to come to you? He got a revelation of who he is. He came to his senses. He began to sit down and ponder over real life. Who am I? Why am I here? He reconsidered and put so many things into consideration. So why am I worrying myself for this life? How many house servants have my father? He is talking to his father. How many high servants of my father's have? Bread enough to eat and to spare. And I perish with hunger. Young brothers and sisters, maybe you are in a church. That church is a far country. You have joined with yourself to pastors who are taking you far from God. And you are still starving. That's where God wants me to take you today. You are in a church. You are in a ministry where you don't see God. You see only bishop. You see only the teachers and the preachers and the deacons and the deaconesses. All of you, you are the most useless people in that church. Respect the deacons. Respect the deaconesses. But don't consider they are more human beings than you are. That's one thing I hate in life. When a person tries to impose because of his position, because of his qualification, because of his identity, she or he wants to tell me that he is more human being than I. It kills me and I fight against that. Why am I that? Fight for God. Fight for the integrity of God and the nature of God in us. That we have been given anything and everything equal. We have been placed in this life journey to pursue God. Don't run after men. Run after Jesus. Men will take you afar off from God. Men will take you far from God. With this prodigal boy, he said he joined himself with the people from the far distance country. Until he came to his senses. Until he began to realize who he is. Until he began to saw himself in the father's eyes. He said, wow, look at me. Look at my father's house. He had a picture. He started dreaming of it. He started dreaming of it. Look at the servants and the high men in my father's house. They are eating. They are preserving food. And I'm starving here dying. Until when should I die here? I will rise up and go back to my father. Sister, why are you still depending upon prayer handkerchief? Why are you thinking that when I send you this, let me send you this. Lounge attic. What do I use it for? I use it to clean my glasses. <laughs> That's the purpose. <laughs> I'll put it in the hunger, I'll put it in the in the envelope and send it to you. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, touch life. <laughs> no, he doesn't use this thing to touch life. He uses his body to touch life. You are buying this thing. Somebody can sell this thing here. If I'm a crook, I'm a chief, I'm a liar, I can sell this thing. I can go and buy this and, and cut it into pieces and stand here and show you what it can do. And I will hire people and pay people. To testify, oh, I was in this. Oh, yes, oh, I bribe them, I pay for them, and you hear them every day. They pay for them. You listen to all this foolishness leading you to hellfire. Oh, yes, that prayer handkerchief worked. Oh, yes, it did. It did. And I'll call people and send money to the accounts. It's a business. Come on, radio, and do it, ladies and gentlemen. Every Christian radio that you are listening to in your country. Those who are not preaching to you, salvation, holiness, and righteousness, what they are doing. 
Those who are telling you they pray for somebody to vomit, cockroach, crocodile, somebody gave birth to antelope, <laughs> reptile, these are foolishness. <laughs> you are listening to this gospel. This uh, mopper is a thief, is an arm robber, is a liar. I don't care if his prayer works for you, the devil is answering your prayers. Any person that put people fades on bangles, I don't have one I would have shown you. They are thieves and arm robbers. Any person that put people fades on a mere thing that you tie on your, on your hand, that it is your savior, is taking your heart from Christ. Taking your heart from Christ. Satan said, if you can bow before me and worship me, I'll give you all these things. And that is what people are doing. We are bowing before these false teachers and false prophets who call themselves fathers. They are liars, they are cheats. Come to Jesus Christ. The prodigal son thought of himself, I will go back to my father and I'll confess my sin. Father, I have sinned against you. What would I sin? I've denied, I've rejected, I refuse. I've neglected you. I've never sat down to think and ponder about how I can become like you. How I can receive your blessing. How I can have what you have for me. But I'm looking for men. I'm thinking I could do it on my own. I will go back and I will ask for forgiveness. I'm no more worthy to be called your son. But call me a servant. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ called the disciples many names. Among other names was friends, slaves, servants, brothers. But the highest name is sons. The prodigal son removed himself because of sin. He removed himself from sonship to a slave, to sin. Sin would take your sonship from God and places you in a slavery. Some of you are in the churches that you don't see yourself as a son of God any longer because the bishop is a son. And you are a slave. You buy into bishop ideas, bishop teachings. Some of you are doing well. They're supposed to do the work of God. But your bishop, your general overseer will tell you, don't do this. And that is it. You stop it. You're following men instead of God. This boy said, I will no longer call myself. Why? What I've changed is sonship with the father. Sin. I've caused him not to see himself as a son any longer. Any teachings that causes you not to see yourself as adequate, as you are more than able. Now you and Gabriel, we have the same father. We have the same DNA. Jesus Christ died for us, that the Holy Spirit, the Father can come and dwell in us, in the bodily form. Ladies and gentlemen, what I can do, you can do it. The call of God is upon everybody. Yesterday, a, son, a, brother, a brother asked me, Pastor, how can somebody know that he is called? I said, the call of God is upon every human being. But your assignment will be known where you are needed. Your assignment will be known where you have passion. Your assignment will be known where you think that something must be done. Rise up and do it. Don't wait upon anybody. See God, pray to God and ask him for the power to do that. And when you are sincerely crying for God in that manner, God will give you the strength to fulfill your call. Nobody needs to lay his hands upon you to fulfill the call. If it becomes necessary, fair be. In Acts chapter 13, Apostle Paul, after they have fasted and ministered unto God, they prayed, and the Holy Spirit revealed to them. Every call of God comes by revelation. And that revelation is the purpose that you are called. Please don't call anybody. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 23, he warned them. And the whole chapter, read it. It was a warning chapter. It, is, it was a warning chapter. And understand that the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't want us to be slave to any person but to be a slave to holiness, righteousness, and truth. Verse 20 said, and he rose and came back to his father. He rose and came back to his father. The man still remained his father. And when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Father's kissed. The father had a compassion. His name is Jesus. He's waiting for your arrival. Don't allow any bishop to tell you that you don't qualify. Don't allow any man of God, a so-called man of God, to tell you that unless they pray for you, God will never listen to your prayer. Don't be witch and don't be deceived by them. They lay wait, waiting for your deception, waiting to destroy you. And if you give in to their deception, 
they will totally take you into a distance country that you will never see God. While he was at a distance country, the father met him, kissed him, embraced him, and called the servant to bring him a shoe, called the servant to give him a ring, a covenant. And the boy bowed down and said, call me no longer your son. I am no longer your son. And the father said, you are always my son. He called the servant and said, come and worship him. And the servant got lost and now he has come back home. Are you a son or your servant? He didn't say a servant. He said, my son went to go back. But he has not come back home. Your father is waiting for you. His name is Jesus Christ. He loves you. You don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. My children call me daddy. I'm responsible for them. Recently, my boy, when I went home and I met one, my, one of my son, he asked me, Daddy, I need money. I had no other choice. I said, what do you need the money for? He said, I need to buy this. I had to give it to him. When I came back, my second son in Germany just told me, Daddy, I need money to buy clothes. I recently sent him money. I need money to buy new clothes. I said, how much do you need? He gave me his budget. I said, you know what? Now I don't have money. I've just returned. Abuse my money. <laughs> so give me some time. I will send you money. My children depend upon me for food. My children depend upon me for nourishment. And biological children. I am responsible for their food, literally, but God is the provider. If you think that when you wake up this morning, it is by your own merit. It is the clock, it is your alarm that wakes you up. Go and put the same alarm on a dead body if you wake up. It is the grace of God that is calling us. Those of you who think that you know much, and therefore you want to enslave people who are under you, I'm afraid for you. Teach the word of truth. Cut people off their link from you. Point them to Christ and let nobody depend upon you for his nourishment. Teach people how to receive the Holy Spirit, fasting and prayers. The thing that people have worked for, they are proud of it. I am very happy that I know God in this way. I don't have a bishop. I don't have a spiritual father that can claim that I lay my hands upon Gabriel and he's been able to preach the way he preached. I don't have any school that can tell me that we gave you certificates. We taught you this. Everything I know comes from the Holy Spirit. So if I meet theologians and they are trying to tell me that you don't know the Bible, I don't speak, I don't go against them because I can't compete with them. I have the only one that teaches me. His name is Jesus. He's my father. Another name that I can give him is the Holy Spirit. These three in one God, they are the one that will take us to where we are going. Maybe you're listening to me say, Brother Gabriel, it seems too difficult. I don't have what you have. Brother, you can have it. How many telephone number do you have? How many people that they have hurt you? How many history you have in your mind? You don't know your brain how much it, if I, how far it can go. Everything that you're expecting people to do for you, you have it. Look at your hands. Look at your mind. Look at your eyes. Look at your nose. Of everything that I have. You can become everything that I have become through Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, not through man. This is what I, I present to you, seek Jesus. Do you need wisdom? Seek Jesus. Do you need understanding? Seek Jesus. Run after him every day. Let him guide you into the divine truth. And your life will never be the same again. Stop seeking men. Because men will seek you from God. Father, I thank you for such a great wisdom, a great knowledge. Presented your word to your people. I pray that let this word have impact in your heart. As they continue to seek after you, draw them closer into a deeper relationship of you. Let them seek you. Let them seek you, not money. Let them seek you, no position. Let them seek you, no prestige. Let the understanding be transferred from themselves and begin to focus on you. Thank you. Maybe you are listening to me say, Brother Gabriel, you've said so many things that have touched my heart, and I know that I can do it. Pray with me. Pray with me that I will be gingered up. Pray with me that the Holy Spirit will be stirred up in me. Apostle Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 4, he warned Timothy, but Paul have a special friendship relationship 
with Timothy. Therefore, he called him my son. He had a very special friendship. Like Jesus had a special friendship relationship with John. Therefore, John called him the beloved. That was a title that Apostle Paul used for Timothy. He was not literally going against what Jesus was saying, that call nobody your father. Many people got their teachings from Paul, but he's the only one person that he called my son. One, he had a special relationship with him. That's why he used the title. Don't call anybody your son. And people argue with me why Paul called him that. Paul was not contradicting the Bible, but he had a special relation, friendship with him. And that is a friendship that Jesus wants you to have. He wants to call you his son. The gospel is for the son. As many that believe in him, to them gave him the power to become the sons of God. Don't you would want to become the son of God? Become a son of God. How can I become the son of God? By believing that Jesus died for you on the cross. By believing that you are a sinner. By believing that you need to confess your sin. You need to pay every person that you owe. You need to restitute. Do you want to do that? Pray this prayer and ask upon the prayer. Say, Jesus, I believe you're the son of God. I believe you died for my sin. I am a sinner. I repent of my sin. And I confess it. That forgive me, Lord. I accept your forgiveness. Come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Give me your Holy Spirit. Give me your heart. Give me your mind. And let me live my life for you. Show me your wings. Let me see what you see. And do what you do. In Jesus' name. Beloved, if you have prayed that prayer, I want to tell you the Lord God have answered your prayer. I want you to look for a Bible-based church. Look for a pastor, a preacher, a teacher of the word of God who will teach you how, it's a mentor, he will show you how to, but he shouldn't become your father. He shouldn't become your father. He should guide you. It's a guidance. It's a guidance. Let somebody guide you into the things of the spirit. Let him guide you there. And after he has guided you there, please sit down and study the word of God together with him. Let him show you how to make heaven. If you don't have such church in your places, I entreat you to listen to Ensign Radio 24-7. On this video, we have all the information that you want. You can listen to End Time Radio by clicking www.endtimeradio.com. We write it together. Endtimeradio.com. Forward slash into bracket life in Christ ministry. You can listen to End Time Radio if you're living in the UK, anywhere in the UK by calling this number. If you don't have internet access, 33 Zero nine nine eight one one three zero, zero three three, zero nine nine eight one one three zero. If you are living in America, you can call zero eight nine zero seven nine zero six zero, zero eight nine zero seven nine zero six zero. If you want to listen to End Time Radio from uh, outside UK and outside america it will cost you so why don't you go on online instead you go to online on tune in tune in.com you search for end time radio there you download the app on your mobile phone on your uh, laptop and you can get it also on your ipad you can also download zeno radio zeno radio zeno radio Zeno Radio. When you go to Zeno Radio, you download the app and you search for End Time Radio. Zeno is that E N O. End Time Radio UK. We can also go to Sia Life. X I I A L I V Life. You can also download the apps from there, and then you can get End Time Radio UK. If you are in Ghana, you don't need to worry yourself. Go to Modern Ghana website. You have the radio side of modern Ghana, and there you can get end time radio from there. Besides that, you can contact me on Facebook. My name is Gabriel Adade, Gabriel Adade on Facebook. I have a telephone number 0044 784 This is my mobile number. On this mobile number, you can WhatsApp me, you can tango me, you can uh 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 Verb me, you can uh, Skype me, whatsoever you want us to have. I'll be willing to be your friend. 
who stand hand in hand and show you the ways of God. I, I'm just guiding you to how to know God yourself. I can't do anything apart from guiding you. I'll pray to you, but a choice is yours. If you want to pick it, you pick it and you move to, towards heaven with me. My heart desires to meet you in heaven. Do you want to meet me in heaven? Live holy life. Throw away all kinds of junks, which people are mischeating and misleading today in our gospel. Until we meet again, my name is Brother Gabriel. I love you and God bless you. Amen.